without taking much, uh, Bobby, thank you very much for your time and it's so good to have you uh, today with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really great. So you, you have a very interesting background. You, you work for Africa to be Bank in Africa. Uh, you work at the White House, Treasury Department. So you really understand very well um, uh, the global economy and, and, and the date, which is going to be the biggest conversation in the next uh, five, ten years after COVID and all these elements. So I, I want to start a little bit our conversation with with what's your assessment of the impact that COVID will have on the world economy, especially in the banking sector? Um, no, thank you. And again, thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I think the, the, the biggest thing we've been learning in the last year with COVID is that we're still learning. And so there's a lot of things that we're still, um, I think, figuring out. I mean, certainly the persistence of low borrowing uh, pricing has been really interesting. I mean, you think about this here in the U.S., but also in places like China and Europe, governments have been able to provide a lot of support without, you know, paying a lot of interest. Um, and that has both direct help, you know, direct support in, in, in some major markets, but it ends up helping, you know, cause those are drivers for a lot of the world. Um, so I, I think it remains to be seen. I think some of the distress that many of us were expecting, we're not seeing. And, and like a lot of things with COVID, I think we're, we're learning that some of the impacts are a little bit different than the, than, than our experiences previously. Um, and I imagine, you know, the Africa debt discussion was pretty hot pre-COVID. There was a lot of discussion. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure that's dramatically changed. You know, I'm not sure COVID has dramatically changed that. I mean, I think those discussions will persist. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, so I think we'll have a lot more of that. But I'm not sure those discussions are so different than before the pandemic. So I saw, I saw the World Bank put out um, a report last year saying 5% of, 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 I think it was it 5% uh, of the global shrinking next year or this year, something like that. Uh, just want to follow up on the adjustment. Do you see a global economy recession coming our way or not really? That's certainly, I mean, that's certainly not kind of my ex expertise. You know, I'm more of a, even though I do business around the world, I do it in very micro ways. So I'm much more of a, of a micro guy. So it's hard to know. But so far, I think things have been resilient. And I think in a lot of places in Africa, I think, you know, to me, I see less of the challenge with the economy and the fallout economically, which I think I was very worried about a year ago. And now, I think the challenge is, um, you know, kind of the persistence of the pandemic. You know, we're, we're pivoting from a pandemic to something that's endemic across Africa where, you know, vaccine availability is not there, uh, vaccine delivery infrastructure in most places, you know, are not like Rwanda <laughs> where, where there is good vaccine delivery infrastructure. So I think, yeah, that's what I'm kind of more worried about is kind of how does, how is there a medium term you know, follow on impact of this. But I would tell you, you know, for me and a lot of the businesses I work with, you know, the, the, the economic impact wasn't nearly what, what we expected. And so I think, again, but maybe there's some delays on that. Maybe, I think a lot of us are kind of just on the lookout. But so far it hasn't had as big of an impact as I think many of us expect. So I, I just want to come back here home a little bit and talk about BRD. Um, sure. You're the chair of one of the most important banks in Rwanda. I'm very interested in much to understand what, what's, what's your vision as the chair of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, BRD? Yeah, and of course, you know, I, the way I think of myself in terms of being the chair is less about my vision. You know, I'm really trying to help, you know, the vision that's been developed, um, you know, with, uh, with Rwandan shareholders and, and in consultation with people um, across the country. Um, I, th I think of it in some ways very simply. I think, you know, many national development banks historically have challenges um, funding government priorities that aren't always good banking opportunities. I don't think that's unique to any country. Um, to some degree, BRD maybe has even faced less of that than some other national development banks, certainly in the region. Um, I think the management team has done a great job um, in the first 18 months really kind of resetting the books of the bank, resetting the team, um, I think really infusing some real excitement and innovation into the team. And to me, that's a really important first step, uh, which, which I really think uh, the CEO and the senior management have done a great job on. We also have a great board, very diverse board that's been very supportive. Now I think 
there's some big things to tackle. You know, I think obviously the first thing is economic recovery, right? Making sure um, the bank can support um, businesses that will lead the job creation and the recovery um, out of this pandemic. Um, that's one. I think two, you know, there's the persistent challenge globally, and it's no different in Rwanda, about figuring out how to do the best financing to support agriculture, right? You still have a huge amount of the economy in agriculture, a huge amount of employment. It's not an easy, it's not a place where development banks or investors have had a huge success globally. Um, that's certainly something, a challenge that we're taking on and that we hope to have, you know, real results to report. And then I think the third thing is really thinking about ways we can support um, entrepreneurs um, in Rwanda. I think for me, as an entrepreneur myself, I think it's an exciting place. I think it's an exciting time. There's a lot of um, entrepreneurs emerging um, in Kigali and in uh, and across the country. Um, and I think it will be exciting to think about ways that we can support um, that ecosystem. You you touched a little bit about this, but I just want to you know get a little the picture better. Um, you know, with COVID affecting Rwanda like the rest of the world, what kind of role BLD is looking to play in the recovery of the economy? or moving forward? You, you just start talking about it. Yeah, no, as I said, I think, I mean, the way I think of it really on, I mean, the government has, uh, uh, with support from from some international partners has really been pretty specific on um, on the elements of on the economic recovery. And of course we at BRD are, are leading some of the execution on that front. You know, obviously the first piece is looking at businesses that really need some restructuring uh, because of, you know, lockdown is the most apparent, but there are other aspects, obviously, with an economy that's been really focused on tourism, um, that's taken a hit. So I think that's the first stage. The bank's been very active there. The government's been very active there. And as I said, I think the second stage on recovery is really looking for businesses, entrepreneurs that are really going to help push the growth and employment uh, to, 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 to really accelerate the recovery that to some degrees, I think from my trip is very much underway. Um, how can we be an accelerant in that, especially on the job creation front? How can we make sure people see? So I think you'll see us prioritizing um, sectors and, and, and companies that we really believe can accelerate that, that job creation and impact that then can lead us into the other elements that we want to play a role. Yeah, yeah. So just a little bit to focus on the big fact Africa and the world in general. Um, I mean, you, you, you run a business. I'm very interested to hear what you thought about what leaders uh, in the business community could do to, you know, mitigate the risk of COVID, which is a hard question. I have. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Yeah, what's, what's the one to yeah. Well, I think, I mean, to me, you know, maybe just because even myself, I have, you know, really four different businesses and they've each been affected in a different way. Um, and, um, but, but th there is a central learning across the board, which is, you know, if you would have talked to me in March last year, there were certain things that we believed would be true that have been true in the past. Um, for example, real estate, you know, most people believed real estate would take a hit. Um, housing would take a hit. You know, there would be liqui a liquidity crunch. You know, for me, we, we, we were aggressive at borrowing any money we could so that we could avoid any liquidity crunch. But actually, those things didn't happen. And in fact, you know, we've seen here in the U.S. a real estate boom. We've seen actually a liquidity boom for many businesses. And so to me, the lesson, and, and it's certainly what we're taking forward with, with my CEOs, my partners, and my companies is really a learning agenda. Because we're really, I think, in uncharted territories. And I think we have to be very thoughtful about what's happening, what data is coming in, what we're learning and how to adjust our businesses. I think the last year actually has been pretty different than what we expected. And I imagine that's going to continue. So I think there are things that we are trying to guess at for the next year, because you have to, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you have to do that. But we're very conscious of the fact that the landscape is quite dynamic right now. I think more so for me than any time I've been um, a professional is just really things have been changing, you know, cultures changing, dynamics are changing, things that we believed were true are just seemingly less true. So I think for entrepreneurs and investors, you really have to take a dynamic approach right now and make sure you're processing information and, and making the best bets you can in that changing landscape.
So what, what, what opportunities have emerged uh, last year or this year uh, through this pandemic? And, and, and what should we do to turn this crisis into opportunity once it's over? We're still going through it, but how do we turn this into an opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, from an Africa context, which is a lot of my, not all of my focus, but a lot of my focus, and even thinking about Rwanda, I mean, certainly, for example, you know, for, you know, a place that's so beautiful, like Rwanda with such beautiful weather, you know, the people are so hospitable, it's such a pleasant place to be. Um, you know, the ability now for me to stay and work from Rwanda for an extended period is more possible than it was yeah. a year ago. Yeah. Um, and I think there are destinations like that around the world that have suffered from remoteness. And now I think remoteness potentially is less of a challenge than it was, you know, 18 months ago. And I think you're going to see some places that um, people enjoyed, but were forced to enjoy them in small components, maybe making bigger bets. Um, and I think we'll, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see some of the, the places that can be smart about it, I think, emerge with a real, with a real opportunity. And in the meantime, places that only benefited from kind of that, 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 that local scale um, are going to see a lot of pressure on their model. I think people that only benefited because they, people needed proximity are play, uh, and, 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 and businesses that needed that, I think are going to face a different challenge um, now. So I, you know, and, and, and so for me, that's the first thing. And then the second thing would be, and this is how I think about it, what are the products and services that support that change? So, you know, if, if people want to stay in Rwanda for longer periods of time and work in a global economy, what are the things they need? Uh, what are the services they need? What are the services they want to buy um, that, that will make that possible? So that's certainly some of the things that we're thinking about um, because we do believe there's, that's going to be one of the lasting changes that comes out of this. That's very interesting. You touch on a few things. That I've, I've been thinking the same way in those lanes. You, you mentioned two things, but just one thing. I will ask the last two questions, and then we we'll jump to the audience questions. Um, you know, you've been involved in Rwanda now uh, for, for a couple of time now, and in Africa. What are you telling a business leader from outside of Rwanda? What makes Rwanda unique, and what does Rwanda offer than the rest of Africa? Yeah. Well, I mean. The first thing um, is just to reiterate what I what I already mentioned, which is, you know, Rhonda has, you know, it's, you know, in the U.S., people love to live in L.A. Why do they love to live in L.A.? Because the weather's nice and, you know, it's a great setting. And um, I mean, traffic's not that good and some other things. But, <laughs> so I think the first thing for people to know about Rwanda is, you know, you can be there. It's a beautiful place to be. People are hospitable. There's security. You know, all of those things are really nice for your personal well-being. And I think that's very important as a first step as, as people think about things, even for investors. Yeah. Um, and then I think mm -hmm. the second thing that, that I always tell people about Rwanda is that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a place where things do get done. You know, you don't see things linger for long periods of time. And, you know, there's a lot of emerging markets that I have experience with around the world where it can take years and years just to get started and um, capital is not patient. People are not patient. And when you're when you're in the business building business, as I am, time is is not on your side. You have to go quickly. And so um, I think one of the big advantages for doing business in Rwanda is the speed of execution. Um, now there are some challenges on the other side, right? I mean, Rwanda is. Um, you know, is not as big of a market as some other markets in Africa or an emerging market. So scale is a is a is a challenge. And then the other challenge consistent with scale is the neighborhood isn't always hospitable or places that you necessarily want to do business, you know, and so and that and that to some degree has gotten worse over the last 10 years versus better. Um, but I think within Rwanda, I think that it's it's again very pleasant place to be and some real um, exciting counterparts in terms of getting things done. Interesting. So uh, I, I will finish here and then we open up for uh, questions from the audience. So we'll go off the record and please, our team, uh, Estelle, if you send us questions, that would be great. But we're back, we're back on, on, on the record. Thank you very much, Bobby, for, for very interesting conversation, engaging. It's always good to have the private sector 
uh, engage our private sector members in the conversation. Um, you know, we look forward to hosting Rwanda when after COVID when things get better and, and, and always good to connect with you and thank you very much. No, thank you so much for having me. And I really, uh, I'd be excited to, 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 to do this again in person, hopefully, or, or just meet and engage in person. And, and thank you for your hospitality. Really appreciate it. Excellent. Have a good one. You too. Uh, everybody, everybody, thank you for joining us today. And specifically, thank you for our CIOs Council that joined us today and the rest of the private sector community. And some ambassadors I see online. Thank you very much for joining us today. And have a wonderful day. Bye.